What's going on guys, ZTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the nicest Raspberry Pi 4 cases available right now, the Argon Pi 4, or the Argon 1 for the Raspberry Pi 4. This case is a built-in fan, and your Raspberry Pi 4 is also passively cooled from the aluminum construction of the case, and it's got a safe power and reset button built in. The Argon 1 for the Raspberry Pi 4 goes for $25, and my all-time favorite case for the Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 is the Flirt case. Constructed of aluminum, it passively cools your Raspberry Pi 4. They also have one for the Raspberry Pi 2, 3, and 3B+. The Flirt case for the Pi 4 does an amazing job cooling the Raspberry Pi 4, but not at a maximum overclock of 2.14 GHz, which is the max we can reach right now on the Pi 4. It does get a little hot when you're overclocked that high, especially if you're overclocking the GPU to let's say 700 or 750 megahertz. So that's where these actively cooled heat sinks come in, like the ice tower. This will definitely keep the Pi 4 cool enough, even overclocked, but it's huge and it costs around $20. The Argon for the Pi 4 is 25 bucks, actively cooled, passively cooled, and it has a safe reset and power button built in, and the thing looks absolutely amazing. So in this video, we're going to take a look at this thing. I'm going to be throwing a Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte model in it. I'm going to overclock that Raspberry Pi 4, and then I'm going to run an extreme test for 20 minutes, just to see if we can keep it cool enough with the Argon for the Pi 4. So you can pick this up on Amazon right now for $25. It's got free prime shipping. Inside of the box, you're going to get a user manual, and there is a script that you need to install for that safe shutdown button, but it also sets the fan up, so when the CPU reaches 55 degrees Celsius, the fan will come on at 10%. 60 degrees Celsius, the fan will go to 55%, and 65 degrees Celsius on the CPU, the fan will max out at 100. And as for the power button, a short press will turn it on, a three second press will do a soft shutdown and a power cut, double tap will reboot your system, and a long five second press will do a force shutdown. It does have a little detachable door here so we can access the GPIO. The top half is constructed of aluminum. We have that custom PCB with the fan, and we also have these two little nubs here. One will make contact with the CPU, Want to make contact with the RAM chip on the Raspberry Pi 4, allowing your case to passively cool the board. Now, in order to make this all work and fit correctly, we have this custom PCB that'll plug right into your Raspberry Pi. It's got two micro HDMIs and the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So what it's going to kind of do is just angle the HDMI and that jack straight out of the back. The case is super easy to assemble. It does come with some thermal pads that you'll place on the CPU and the RAM chip. You could use some thermal paste if you want, but I've never had any issues with these, so I'm going to go ahead and place it on the CPU and the RAM, and then we'll do an assembly. So I've got the thermal pads in place. As you can see, inside of the case we have the 40 female GPIOs, and your Raspberry Pi 4 is going to plug right into here. It is a bit tricky because that Ethernet is tight, but this case goes together really nicely. Just got to make sure you have this lined up correctly. I may have a couple bent pins on my Pi. But once it's lined up, it'll press right in there. And as you can see, everything lines up perfectly on the rear. So on the rear, we have full access to all four USB ports, Ethernet, two micro HDMI ports, and our USB Type-C power in, plus that 3.5 millimeter audio jack. The bottom of the case is plastic, and they do send some rubber feet with it, so you can stick them on if you want to. We will have to screw the pie down. There's four small screws and four long screws. The small screws are going to go inside. And these are just going to hold that HDMI daughter board down and the Raspberry Pi in the case. And once we're done with the internals, we'll just pop the bottom on. There's four more screws that go in here, but we have access to the micro SD card. And it includes some rubber feet so this thing doesn't slide all over your desk. When it's all said and done, you got a really sleek looking Raspberry Pi 4 case. I would definitely display this on my desktop. Now, I know that a lot of people say that the Raspberry Pi 4 can replace your desktop, but I just don't believe it right now. For some people, it might be able to if you just do web browsing and email viewing. But if you are one of those people, this case might be for you. It looks really nice. It would look really good sitting under a monitor or right next to a monitor on top of a desk. But looks aren't everything. We really need to get into some thermal testing with this thing. I'm going to be overclocking this Raspberry Pi 4 4 GB model to 2.14 GHz on the CPU and 750 MHz on the GPU. All right, so here we are. I've installed the proprietary Argon 1 script. It's really easy to do. It tells you how to do it right in the manual. Looks like our 
Idle temperature is 41 to 42 degrees Celsius. I am overclocked to 2.14 gigahertz on the CPU and 750 megahertz on the GPU. So this thing will get hot. So what I'm about to do is run a 20 minute stress test. This is gonna max out all four cores at 2.14 gigahertz. We have my CPU speed, just the load on the CPU. And from here, every two minutes, I'm gonna get a reading of the temperature. It's gonna create a log in the background and I can read it from there. I'm gonna go ahead and start stressing it out. You'll see that CPU jump up to 2.14 gigahertz, 100% CPU usage, we're maxing out all four cores, and the next reading that comes up should be higher than 41 degrees Celsius, because we're really stressing that CPU out. And there it is, 52 degrees Celsius. So it jumped up quite a bit because we got a high overclock on this little CPU. If this can stay under 65 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes straight, we're good to go. By the way, I've also set a temp limit on the CPU. So instead of throttling at 60 or 65 degrees Celsius, I've set it to 80 degrees Celsius. If it ever goes that high, we'll see it in the recorded temperature here, and my CPU will drop back down to 600 megahertz. I'm gonna go ahead and let this go for 20 minutes. Hopefully it can handle it. Now I just heard that fan kick on because we are at 55 degrees. With the script they include, at 55 degrees Celsius, the fan will turn on at 10%, 60 degrees Celsius, 55%, and at 65 degrees Celsius, that fan will hit 100%, so it should be pretty loud, but at 10%, it's not that bad now. So we're a little over 10 minutes in and we did hit 60 degrees, but it dropped back down. We're at 58 now. Let's let it run for another 10 minutes and see what happens. Well, after 20 minutes of stress testing, I'm actually still testing it out. It's still running in the background here. We're still maxed out. So we started off at 42 degrees Celsius and ended at 58. This case will definitely keep your Raspberry Pi 4 cooled, even overclocked to pretty much the maximum here. I mean, there's really nothing else that I could do here to max it out even more. I could put a little strain on the GPU, but I'm pretty sure that this case will handle it. After all, 20 minutes with all four cores at 2.14 gigahertz is a pretty extreme test for this little board. And this case passed it with flying colors. I can definitely recommend the Argon case for the Raspberry Pi 4. It performs great. It looks awesome. I know it's a bit expensive at $25, but you do get some pretty neat features built in. And it's super easy to assemble and set up. So if you've been looking for a really nice Raspberry Pi 4 case that'll keep your Pi cool under load, even overclocked, the Argon Pi 4 case might be for you. If you're interested in picking one up, I will leave some links in the description. If you have any questions, or if you've seen a Raspberry Pi 4 case that you want me to test out on this channel, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.